Hello and welcome to Discipleship Class. I'm Pastor Aaron Motley of Miracle Deliverance Temple of Christ, and I'm glad that you could join us for the Discipleship course. This course is designed for new Christians to get a basic foundational doctrine of the Bible. At the end of this course, you will be able to take a test. It will be a comprehensive exam that those of you who are taking this course online will have to order the test and it will cost $10 to get the test. And at the end of the test, when you pass the test, you'll have a certificate. Uh, that certificate is something that you can keep with you uh, throughout the rest of your life as something that you can show that you have taken a course of Bible studies and that you have passed those courses. For those of you who are members of the church, the test will be free, of course, and you will also get a certificate and that certificate will qualify you to move further in the area of leadership in the church. So. With all that said, let's get into course number one. Lesson number one, the plan of salvation. On your study sheet, you'll see the definition of salvation. You'll see three definitions for the word salvation. Number one, salvation means to escape from the wrath of God and eternal death. The reference scripture here is found in Romans chapter five, verse nine. Number two, salvation means being brought into a right relationship with God, the creator. Number three, the definition of salvation is having security and peace with God. Bible terms used to describe salvation are saved, rescued, redeemed, justified, born again, or righteousness. All of these are terms that you'll see throughout the Bible, and they all refer to the plan of salvation. Once again, understand salvation means to be delivered from something and brought into a safe place. All right. Next, why do we need salvation? According to the Bible in Romans chapter five, verse number 12, it tells us we are all born sinners because of Adam's original sin. Now, sin is defined as the guilt and condemnation that causes the wrath of God to come upon the unrighteous. It is the power that controls the unrighteous person resulting in eternal death as we will see in Romans chapter six, verse number 23. God made all things perfect from the beginning. And that's something that's very important for us to understand is that God did not make any mistakes in his creation. And so when he created everything, he created everything perfect. But eventually, because mankind who has the will or the ability to make decisions. Uh, man, has, man has a free will and so do angels. And because of man's free will, man sinned or rebelled against God. And when man who had dominion over the whole earth in everything that God created, God gave man dominion over everything. And God gave him a command and he said that, uh, that when you have dominion over everything, now I will give you a command that you are to eat of every tree and that tree that is in the midst of the garden, you are not to eat of it. In the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. And so what does that mean? That means that when man would disobey God, man would fall away from his relationship with God, causing all of creation to fall. And so all of creation is now on a collision course to death and destruction, all because man sinned from the beginning. Eventually the body will cease to function and decay. Here's a note in our study notes. It says, man's blood is contaminated with sin. It is just like a virus. The blood of Jesus is the only antidote that can get rid of the sin virus. 
A further teaching on sin is found in a separate study. God provides Jesus Christ as the only means of salvation. In John chapter 14, verse 6, it tells us that Jesus himself says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 3, 16, Romans 6, 23, Acts 16, 30 through 31, Acts 4, 10 through 12, Acts 2, 21. All of these are reference scriptures that shows that Jesus Christ is the only way that we can come to God. The world tries to paint a picture that there are many ways to salvation or many ways to God, but there is only one way. Jesus himself made this claim. If Jesus truly is God and the Son of God, he makes this claim himself and he says, there is no other way. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So Jesus Christ is God's only means of salvation. He is his only remedy for sin. The only way you're going to be rescued or saved is through Jesus Christ. Now, can you lose salvation? That's the next question. There are two types of salvation that I want to talk about. One is called biblical salvation. Biblical salvation is the type of salvation that comes from God and it can never be taken away because it is genuine. John chapter 10 verse 28 says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. John 10 29 says, my father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. In Ephesians chapter number 1, verse 13, God, in whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 4 and 30 says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Now, if you receive the salvation that the Bible teaches about or that the Bible speaks of, you will never be without salvation after you receive salvation. You cannot fall away from true, genuine, biblical salvation. You would never lose it because God has sealed you by his spirit and nothing can cause you to go away from or fall away from salvation. Now, we're going to look at another type of salvation, a man-made salvation. And this we're going to look at it's called perceived salvation. People do lose perceived salvation because it is a perception of salvation not rooted in the word of God and faith. It is self-righteousness without grace. Therefore, it cannot last. And yes, people can lose this type of salvation because it is only perceived salvation. Let me give you some scriptures on that. First Timothy 4, 1 Timothy 4.1 says, Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. 2 Timothy 3.5 Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. 2 Thessalonians 2.10 says, And with all deceivableness, of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Second Thessalonians 2 11 and for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So you see perceived salvation is not salvation at all. It is when people live 
in such a way that they can fool other people that they are saved or that they have a relationship with God. They will say that they're going to heaven. They will go to church sometimes. Sometimes they'll carry Bibles and they'll say that they're right with God. But at some point in time, their life is going to fall apart because if they don't get born again, if they never come to know the Lord in their lifetime, then they're going to fall away from the faith. Now, when I say fall away from the faith, that's not the same thing as falling away from salvation. The faith is simply good teaching. It is the gospel. It is the, the, the Bible teachings. So you can be in a good church that's teaching the right thing. You can be a part of a fellowship of believers who are teaching and believing the right thing. But if you are not born again, you will either have to get born again or you will fall away from the faith. So the faith simply is being involved in good teaching. But if the good teaching is not applied in your life, it is not salvation. So I hope you can understand that. Once again, there are two types of salvation that we're talking about. One, biblical salvation. You can never, ever lose biblical salvation. Number two, it is a perceived salvation where a person may look like on the outside that they have salvation and that they know God, but they do not. And so that is the type of salvation that people will lose. Notice, even in the scripture, Jesus talks about this in the place uh, in Matthew chapter 25, where uh, the judgment is going to take place, the, the, the judgment seat of Christ where there's the separation of the sheep and the goats. And it says that the sheep would be on his right hand and the goats on his left. And he will say to those who are his sheep that you have done everything that you were supposed to do. He said, uh, when, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was in prison, you came to me. Or when I was sick, you came to me. And they said, but Master, when did we do these things? And he says, when you did it to the least of these, my brethren, you did it unto me. And so he said, enter into your rest. He gave them or will give them eternal life. Then he turned to the goats on the other side and he said to them that you have not come to see me when I'm sick. You have not you have not taken me in when I was a stranger. You have not done all of these things that is necessary to help people. And he says, depart from me. I know you not, you worker of iniquity. He says this to those who, who have come to him and said, but, but, but master, haven't we prophesied in your name? Haven't we done all these great works in your name? And he says, oh, you don't know me. I don't know you. Depart from me. I know you not. And so, I paraphrase this just a little bit just to get you to understand what is going on in the at the judgment seat of Christ where all of us are going to be judged there and there are some who he will accept and some who he will not accept but there are many who will come to him saying that we have done great works we have done many things in your name but he says depart from me I know you not you don't have a relationship with me you are not born of me so there are many people who are doing great works, but it is not the works that save you. It is having a right relationship with the Lord that saves you. You must know him and he must know you. And so that's very, very important. So there are those who have a perceived salvation, but they will lose their salvation because it is not real. It is not genuine. It is not based on the biblical type of salvation. OK, hope you understand that. Now, only counterfeit Christians, apostates, reprobates have perceived salvation. They eventually fall away from the faith unless they get born again. Salvation is guaranteed to those who continue in the faith. Second Corinthians 1 22, 1 John 2 24, John 6 44. All of these are scripture references about continuing in the faith. 
So the only way you can continue in the faith is that you are born of the Spirit of God. If you are born of the Spirit of God, you will be able to continue in the faith and you will then not lose your salvation. So that's the guarantee that you have. The Spirit of the Lord has to be in you, living in you as a part of you in order for you to be truly born again and that you would never lose your salvation. All right. How do you initially receive salvation? According to Luke chapter 13, verse 3, Acts 2, thir, tw uh, excuse me, Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Mark 16, 16, Acts 16, 31, Romans 10, 9 through 13. All of these scriptural, uh, all of these scriptural passages will help you to understand how to initially receive salvation. And I'm going to give you just a little bullet point on how to receive biblical salvation. Number one, it's important that you repent. To repent means to change. What do you change? Well, there are three things that's necessary to change in order for you to have true biblical salvation. Number one, you must change your mind. Number two, there must be a change of heart. And number three, there must be a change of action. So repent means to have all three of these stages in order for you to have the fullness of salvation. So change your mind, change your heart, change your actions. The change of mind means that you start thinking like Christ and stop thinking carnally. You, you have to be renewed in your mind. The Bible says that we must be transformed by the renewing of our minds. You have to have your heart changed. That means that when you repent, you develop affection for God and stop loving the world. Scripture tells us how important it is not to love this world, but you fall in love with the Lord God himself. And that is the top commandment is to love him with all your heart, all your soul, all your might, all your strength. That is the top commandment or the first commandment. Next, it's important that you change your actions. Do what you know that pleases God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So when you start acting out what you believe, and that is that you believe in a righteous God, then you start living like a righteous person. And that doesn't mean that everything that you do is going to be absolutely perfect. It just means that you are striving for perfection in the Lord. You are moving toward uh, developing a right character or a good character that, that is appropriate for the kingdom of God. And so God himself lives his life through you and causes you to be a holy person, causes you to be a righteous person. And so when he's living his life through you, and you're letting him use you as a vessel of honor, then that is the change of action. You don't behave the way you used to. Your behavior changes. And so you start behaving more in a mature manner the way God would want you to. You want to live your life to please God. That's that third phase or that third uh, part of repentance. Finally, salvation is as easy as ABC. A, B, C. <coughs> These are the ABCs of salvation. A, acknowledge that you are a sinner. B, believe Jesus is the only one who can save you. And C, confess publicly that Jesus is your Lord. You want to ask Christ to save you right now. Again, how you do that is by acknowledging that you are a sinner. B, Believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to God or to salvation. And C, confess Jesus Christ. Tell other people who he is. And then you know that confession is made under salvation. Why don't we pray now that you receive Jesus Christ into your heart. Father, for this one who is listening and watching, 
I pray that you will convict their heart of sin. Let them know their need for salvation. And Father, I pray that you will bless them now to acknowledge that they need you and that they know that you are the only way, the truth, and the life. Lord, teach them that if they believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again on the third day, that if they believe in you, they can be saved. Father, I thank you right now that the gospel is preached to them and that they will accept you as Lord and Savior, repenting of their sins and asking you to forgive them of their sins, washing them and cleansing them of all unrighteousness. At this very moment, they can receive you as Lord and Savior and be born again. For this we thank you for in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we hope that you're now ready to take the journey into the rest of the course. And we want you to know that Jesus Christ is your Lord.